Great. Um, OK, so good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today uh, for Pensions Awareness Week. Uh, my name's Amy. I'm the Employee Relations Manager here at West Yorkshire Pension Fund. Um, and today uh, we're going to talk to you about the fundamentals of the local government pension scheme. Um, so we're going to cover all the benefits of being a member um, of the pension scheme. You can see on the um, the slide there our, our timetable of events for this week. So you may um, may want to join us for one of our other sessions um, later in the week, possibly understanding your pension statement or um, join us on Thursday to hear more about um, increasing your benefits. So today's session um, is going to be delivered to you by Richard Quinn, who's one of our pension fund reps. Um, he's going to take you through the presentation, which will be around 40, 45 minutes. And then um, we will um, invite a, a Q&A at the end um, of the session. Uh, we will be sending out a questionnaire feedback as well following on from today's session. So please do take some time um, to let us know what you thought um, ab ab about today's session, uh, because obviously feedback is, is really, really useful for us. Um, so that's it from me. I will hand you over to Richard now. He'll take you through the presentation. So hope hopefully you'll all find it uh, useful and informative. Thanks, Amy. <clears throat> Afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first session of Pensions Awareness Week. So, as Amy advised, we will be covering the LGPS fundamentals pre April 14 joiners. So, this is anyone who joined the scheme before the 1st of April 2014. Um, as Amy advised, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. So if you pop them in the chat box or make a note of any questions you may have um, to ask at the end of the session, um, and we'll make some time available to uh, cover those questions. Um, we do advise if you have any specific scenarios related to yourself um, that you best contact our contact centre and we will give you the um, contact details for that towards the end of the presentation as well. It's just that we, with so many people we can't really go into personal circumstances so it's just general questions we'll be covering today. <clears throat> so in today's session we're going to be covering the following topics. So as I've said we're going to be covering information in regards to the LGPS for members who joined the scheme before the 1st of April 2014. So we'll be covering the key benefits of the scheme. So it's just emphasised that there's so many more benefits just to paying into a pension. So we'll cover those in detail for you. We'll also talk through who can join the scheme. We'll look at the contributions and what it costs you as a member. And we'll also give you an illustration just to demonstrate how what that looks like. We'll talk about the option and possibility of transferring in pensions. So if you have any previous pension rights, there is the option for you to transfer in. We'll also go into depth about how your pension is calculated and how that builds up, just to give you an idea of how your pension can build up over time and help you in preparing for retirement. And because the scheme changed on the 1st of April 2014, we'll touch on the care scheme and final salary benefits. We'll talk about your annual pension statement, planning for the future. We'll touch on introducing My Pension Online, so it's the online account we provide you, and the new estimate tool as well. And then finally, we'll touch on the further reading supports, the additional resources we offer to help you understand your local government pension scheme and answer some of the questions you may have in relation to your pensions. Before we proceed, um, what I would like to do is just give you a brief explanation and introduction to ourselves and, and how we operate. So we are the LGPS administrator for your local government pension scheme, so we're West Yorkshire Pension Fund. It's administered by Bradford Council. Um, we set up a shared service back in 2015 with Lincoln County Council with the aim of improving efficiency and best, adding best value to you as members. And since then, we've expanded to include two additional like-minded pension funds. So we now have West Yorkshire Pension Fund, Lincolnshire, London Borough of Hounslow and London Borough of Barnet in the Local Government Pension Scheme. And we also administer the 
fire authorities. So we have 23 fire authorities, which each have three schemes each. So what that means is there's over 850 employers that we liaise with and assist and support. There's over 400,000 members. So in order for us to do this, we have 112 administration staff. We have 19 investment staff and we have offices based both in Bradford and Lincolnshire. So that helps us to be able to <coughs> provide the administration service to the funds we administer and you as members as well. So now what I'd like to do is just provide a summary of the key benefits of the scheme. So you'll see the, the main benefits listed on the slide on the screen. <clears throat> so as well as paying into a pension, it means you're having a secure pension. You receive tax relief for paying into that pension. You can have access to a tax free lump sum at retirement. There is ill health cover, so if you're no longer fit or able to work, there is cover built into the scheme to protect you. There is life cover and survivor's pensions, so there's peace of mind that, as well as a pension for yourself, your peace of mind that you're taking care of your loved ones in the event anything should happen to yourself. And um, But we'll go into these individually in more detail. <clears throat> so let's have a look at retirement. So. As long as you've been in the scheme for two years or more, you can access um, your benefits from age 55. That is expected to change and it will increase to age 57 from 2028. Um, we don't have any much further information than we do at the moment, but as soon as we get any further information, we will communicate that to you as members and obviously your employers to make them aware. So we will provide more information as soon as that is available. So as I said, you can access your benefits from age 55 at the earliest all the way up to age 75. The scheme regulations state that you must leave the pension scheme at your 75th birthday. So this is called age retirement. But there are additional retirement options available to you, which is at the discretion of your employer. So there is flexible retirement. So what this means is you can access your pension from age 55 onwards. So you receive immediate payment of all or some of your benefits and continue working. The stipulations are that you just either reduce your hours or you reduce your grade. The other option is redundancy or business efficiency. So if you're over age 55 and your employer makes you retire due to redundancy, then you can access your pension benefits straight away as well. You also have ill health retirement from any age. So there are subject to conditions and eligibility criteria to meet those uh, ill health benefits, but we will cover that in more depth as well. So as I've said, it's a secure pension. So what we mean by secure pension is it's guaranteed pension backed by law. So the local government scheme regulations stipulate in the regulations how it's calculated and that pension is guaranteed by law. So what we mean is it doesn't depend on investment return like some private pensions. So there's no worry of how well the stock market and the investments are performing. It's set out in the regulations. So what you are anticipated to have it entitlement at retirement is what you will be paid at retirement as well. It's inflation proofed, so it will retain its value. So that means it keeps its value in line with the cost of living. And as I'm sure you're aware of the cost of living crisis, having an inflation proof pension is a valuable benefit. So for example, this pension, this means your pension account has been uplifted by 10.1% in April 23. So it will get uplifted in line with inflation each year. And more importantly, it is payable for life as well. <clears throat> so as a member of the scheme, you receive tax relief. So that means you get tax relief on your contributions. Your contributions are taken at source by your payroll department. So you don't need to worry about managing your contributions. It's all done at source. Uh, so the key point here is the benefit you receive is the tax relief on your contributions. And we will demonstrate a practical example of this later on in the presentation, just so you can see the comparison of someone who isn't in the pension scheme and who is. 
At retirement, you have the option to access a tax-free cash lump sum as part of your retirement benefits. So depending on when you join the scheme, you may already have an element of an automatic tax-free lump sum, but all members have the option to increase their tax-free lump sum at retirement. Uh, what this means is you can swap some of your pension, so that reduces your annual pension to increase the lump sum you have access to. So this is done on a following ratio on the slide for every one pound of pension you convert, that provides you with 12 pound of tax-free lump sum payment in return. The maximum lump sum you're able to access is set by HMRC and it can only be up to the 25% of the capital value of your accrued pension rights. So that will apply to your overall, all your pension rights at retirement. Ill health cover. So as we said, if you're no longer fit or able to carry on working, your benefits can be released on health grounds. So ill health retirement is only permissible with your employer's consent and is subject to certain conditions. So an independent registered medical practitioner will advise on the case and your employer will make a decision based on these advisements. So if you qualify, you potentially could be eligible for immediate payment of your pension. There are three tiers awardable. So there's tier one, tier two and tier three. So it's all depending on your ability to undertake gainful employment and carry out the duties of your role that will determine which tier you're awarded. <clears throat> Again, this pension is inflation proofed, so it will keep its value in line with the cost of living. <clears throat> um, but ultimately it is an employee decision. Um, so we understand there can be disagreements about decisions, but the law allows the opportunity to challenge the decision your employer makes. And this can be done via the internal dispute resolution procedure, otherwise known as the IDRP. And more information of this is available on our website. There's life cover built into the scheme. So in the unfortunate event of your death, a lump sum is payable of three times your annual pensionable pay if you're still actively contributing into the scheme. And this is payable to a loved one of your choice. So you can nominate who you'd like it payable to. You can have multiple nominees. So you can elect to pay a spouse, partner, child, or even a charity. You can nominate the lump sum to be split equally or different percentages as you may decide who you want to pay that to and you can complete your nomination on the my pension online portal so we do recommend that if you're making any changes or if your circumstances have changed then you do update your nomination to make sure that's up to date um, as when the fund decides who that's payable to they do take account in into account any nominations you've made so we do advise you keep that up to date if your circumstances have changed at any point from when you originally uh, submitted that the scheme also provides a survivor's pension, so there's peace of mind to know that your family can have financial security. There is a pension payable for your spouse, civil partner or eligible cohabiting partner. And there is also a survivor's pension payable to any potential eligible children. So for eligible children, there are certain conditions that they must meet to be entitled to payment of a pension. Joining the LGPS, so let's take a look at who can join the LGPS. So if you have a contract of three months or more, uh, under the age of 75, you're not eligible to join another public sector pension scheme, so such as the teacher's pension scheme. So for example, if you were a teacher, you would be eligible to join the teacher's pension scheme, and therefore you wouldn't be eligible to join the local government pension scheme. Uh, if you meet those criteria, you'll be contractually enrolled by your employer and you will have a pension record created for each role that's and a link to your employment record so if you only hold one role you will only have one pension record if you have more than one role you will have a contract for each eligible employment so for example if you're a midday supervisor um, and a cleaner you would have a pension record for each of those roles as long as they meet the eligibility <clears throat> So it may get confusing sometimes if we if we reference more than one role. Um, so it, it, we do speak to you in regards to each individual role if you have more than one role. <clears throat> when you join the pension scheme, you have the option to look at transferring in any previous pension benefits. 
So we do advise not to delay. You could lose out. A transfer usually buys more if it's fully completed within a year of joining the LGPS. And if you decide not to look into a transfer now, your employer or former pension scheme might not allow it at a later date. So your automatic right to transfer expires after your first year of employment. You can still explore transferring in, but it is at the discretion of your employer. So it's down to your employer to say whether they agree to that late transfer. So we do advise if you've just joined, then you've got a year to transfer in. So we do ask you to look at that as soon as possible. So we don't want you to miss out. So we're just going to look at the transfer process. <clears throat> so you can ask for a transfer quote. So you request the forms from our website. You fill in part A and then send that to your previous pension provider. So when they reply, you send the information to us. What we'll do is we'll run through our system and do a calculation of how much it is worth in our scheme. We'll let you know, and, and then if you let us know you want to go ahead, what we'll do is we'll request a payment if you said yes, you want to proceed. Your previous pension scheme pays the transfer value to us. We'll then update our your pension record on our system, and then we'll write out to confirm that the transfer has gone through and this is what it's bought into in your LGPS pension. So when you join the pension, you will contribute to the pension scheme to cover the cost of providing you with a pension. And your contribution is based on your actual pensionable pay. So you'll fall into, so the, depending on the pay band, you'll fall into as per this table on the screen. That will determine the contribution rate payable by you towards your pension. So these bands will change annually to move with inflation. So in some cases you may change bandings even though you've not had a change in pay. But as you progress through the pay bandings, that may mean you will um, move into a different banding. So for example, if you went from 27,600 to 31,000, then you're moving into a new pay banding and your contribution rate will change. Um, if you're in the 50-50 scheme, you pay half the contribution rate and build up half the pension, but we will cover that uh, the 50-50 scheme in more depth uh, later on in the presentation. <clears throat> As we've said, um, your contributions attract tax relief, so paying into the scheme, you do receive tax relief. And in addition, your employer pays what is needed to fund the member's benefits and are set for the following three years. So the employee contribution rates are set by the actuary following a triannual valuation. <clears throat> now what I want to do is just look at what it actually costs. So just give you <clears throat> an idea of what someone, it would cost someone that isn't in the pension scheme and to what is if someone was in the pension scheme. So if we look on the slide, you'll see that if we have someone that's on a salary of 24,500, so it's just over 2,000 pound a month gross, they're paying no pension, they're paying tax of 199 pounds and national insurance contributions of 119 pounds. That gives them a net pay of 1,724 pounds, where Someone in the pension scheme, <clears throat> they're again just over two thousand oh, pound monthly uh, monthly salary. They're paying one hundred and eighteen pounds pension contributions. You'll see the tax has gone down to one hundred and seventy five pound. The national insurance contributions stay the same, and their net pay is one thousand six hundred thirty pound. So the net cost per month is ninety four pounds. So the difference is ninety four pound to pay towards a pension uh, for your retirement, and also to get the other scheme, the main scheme benefits that we touched on at the start of the presentation, um, to give you that life cover, ill health cover, and peace of mind to make sure that your family are, are care for after. You, in the event of anything happens to you. <clears throat> so from the 1st of April 2014, the LGPS changed to what was known as a care scheme. So this stands for Career Average Revalued Earnings Scheme. So what this means is the pension builds up as an average of the pay that you receive throughout your career. <clears throat> so the care scheme is a defined benefit scheme, which means your benefits are calculated using a formula. So it's based on an accrual rate, so your pensionable pay 
at a 149th if you're in the main scheme, or if you're in the 50-50 scheme, then you would have an accrual rate of a 198th. And that is just basically how your pension builds up each year. So pension is revalued in line with inflation each year. <clears throat> so if we look at how your pension is calculated in a scare scheme and how it builds up, so in year one, we would take a 49th of your cumulative pensionable pay, and that starts a pot. That starts your pension pot. Then in year two, you would have your opening balance. It would be revalued in line with inflation, and then we'll add the earned pension you've built up in year two. Then year three, we'll add the earned pension added towards what you've already accrued in the scheme each year up until you build your pension pot. So just to give you an idea of how your pension builds up, here's another example showing you how your pension builds up over a three year period. So in year one, a 49th of 24,491 gives you 499 pounds 82 pence. The cost of living adjustment of 0.5% means at the end of year one, your total pension pot is £502.32. For year two, your pay has gone up, so a 49th of 24920 gives you £508.57 for that year. We add that to the opening balance of 502 Your total account is now at £1,010.89. We adjust it for the cost of living, 3.1%, and that increases to £1,042.23. Then in year three, again, had a slight pay rise, so a 49th of 26,845 gives you a pension pot for that year of £547.87. We add that to the balance you've already accrued, and that gives you a balance at the end of March of £1,590.10. The cost of living adjustment was 10.1%, so that increases your pension pot to £1,750.70. So it just gives a picture of how quickly the pension builds up over a short period of time. Uh, now what I want to do is just talk a bit about the 50-50 scheme that I've referenced a few times up to now. It was implemented into the scheme, so you pay half the standard pension contributions for a while and stay in the pension scheme. It's It was developed more for an idea of if you have a situation of affordability or cost constraints or changes in your circumstances that means you think actually I, I can't afford to be in the pension scheme. The 50-50 scheme means you build up half the amount of pension, so your pension builds up a rate of a 198th, but you still keep all the main benefits you would be if you were in the main scheme. So you still have the full ill health cover, the life cover, your employer still pays in the full amount that they contribute to cover the cost. You can move back to the main section at any time and you'll automatically be brought back in the main section following auto enrollment or following nil pay as a result of sickness, injury or child related leave. So there is that flexibility on to help you arrange for your circumstances if they change, um, but still keep saving for pension um, and maintain those key benefits that you get as part of the main scheme. So let's just have a look at the main versus 50-50. So it's just an idea to show you what would be in comparison. So based on a pension pay of 21,000, we've made some assumptions that the cost of living increase is 2% and pay increases are 2% and you stay in the pension scheme for 40 years. So if you in the red section, that is if you're in the main scheme. So for that period, you would almost have up to £40,000 saved. Whereas in the 50-50 scheme, you're paying half the pension, so you're building up half the rate of pension, so you would almost have up to £20,000. So you can see the difference in the values, but you've still got all the main benefits in. It's inflation proofed as well. So as an example, using the cost of living increase, you've entered a pint of milk at the start of retirement uh, pension is 50p and you'd still be able to afford that cost at £1.8 at the end of that period. So it's just an idea to show you that you're not building up as much as if you're in the main section, but you're still building up a pot at retirement and still maintain those key benefits of the scheme as well. So for those of you who've attended today, is 
possibly because you've been in this LGPS before the 1st of April 2014. So this is when the pension scheme operated on a final salary basis. So you will have built up final salary benefits up to the 31st of March 14, and then with everyone else, you were automatically entered into the care scheme. <clears throat> so final salary benefits, it's calculated based on final salary and pensionable service. The accrual rates were a 60th or an 80th accrual rate, so depending when you were in the scheme. So if you were in the scheme before the 1st of April 2008, your pension built up as an accrual rate of an 80th. From the 1st of April 2008 to the 31st of March 14, your pension was an accrual rate of a 60th. So even though you've now gone into the care scheme, you maintain a final salary link, and if you choose to combine your benefits without having continuous break of more than five years, um, you'll still maintain that final salary link. <clears throat> so just to give you an example of how we calculate final salary benefits, this is where you're in the pension scheme before the 1st of April 2014. So we look at your pensionable service. So this is prorated for part-time working. So anyone who's not working full-time, the service will be prorated down to your part-time hours. It also includes in transferred in service, We'll look at your accrual rate. So pre-April 2008, it's an 80th. Post-April 2008, it's a 60th. We'll then look at your final salary. So we use your full-time equivalent pay from the final 365 days of employment. And then this will give you your final salary membership. So from the 1st of April 98 to the 31st of March 2008, there was 10 years service. So divide by an 80th times by a final pay of 20,000, that gives you an annual pension of 2,500 pounds. There was a lump sum of three times your annual pension automatically provided under the pre-1st of April 2008 regulations. That would automatically give you a lump sum of 7,500. And then six years from 1st of April 08 to the 31st of March 14 at a 60th times 20,000 would give you 2,000 pounds. So that would then give you the 4,500 as an annual sum pension and 7,500 lump sum. With the final salary membership, the scheme offers pay protection in the form of the best of the last three years. So we automatically look at the best of the last three years to see if that gives you a higher final pay to calculate your final salary members benefits. So final pay is based on the highest salary in the last 365 days in the final three years of employment. <clears throat> we also have 10 years protection, so there's additional protection on final salary and benefits only. So what we will do is if you've had a reduction in pay, we will take the best average of three consecutive years in that 10 year period, <clears throat> have to have been with the same employer, and that will see that provide you with a, a higher final salary pay to use in the calculation of your final salary benefits. OK, so what I'm going to do now is just hand you over to my colleague, Amy, who's just going to launch the first poll of the session for you. So you should be able to see on the slide the question that's going to be asked, but Amy will launch that poll for you. Oh, Amy, you're on mute. Oh, apologies for that. Um, OK, so obviously Richard has spoke a lot about how we calculate your pension, what we're using in terms of your salary, your pay, your hours, all of those different things. Um, but everyone's going to have a very, very different um, career path and career pattern. So everyone's pension is going to look very different. Um, so the best thing for you to do um, to understand just how much you're going to get is, is look at your annual pension statement. Um, so we're interested to know just how many of you have actually looked at this year's annual pension statement. So that is the question you should be seeing on your screen now. Um, so have you looked at your most recent annual pension statement? Um, yes, no, or I don't know what that is. So if you can let us know um, where you fit in, in those responses, that would be really helpful. 
so we've got the responses coming in now so nobody is telling us that they don't know what it is so that's really positive um, and we have got 72 percent of you who have looked at your annual pension statement which is great um and 23 uh, sorry 27 percent now that that haven't looked at the pension statement um, so thank you for um participating in the poll um i'll pass you back over to richard thanks amy and thanks everyone for taking part in that poll some really good numbers there and always good to hear that people aren't aware of what the pension statement is so your pension statement is we provide you with one every year and it gives you an indication of how your benefits have accrued up to that date. Um, so this is what your annual pension statement will look like. So you'll have, because you joined before the 1st of April 2014, you'll have Section A, which is your final salary scheme membership, and then your care pension scheme membership in Section B. So it will confirm to you that the rate of pay that we've used in the calculation of your final salary membership was provided to us by your employer as at the 31st of March. It then tells us your final salary yearly membership and a one off lump sum. So it would automatically tell you the one off lump sum if you got pre 1st of April 2008 membership and um, where there's an automatic lump sum associated with those benefits. Um, after the 1st of April 2008, uh, you would need to convert pension to provide uh, your lump sum. So then it'll tell you the total pension pay earned for the scheme year, the opening balance at the 1st of April, the cost of living adjustment, the pension built up during that year, and then the closing balance. And then it'll go on to show that the total yearly pension of your A, and B sections of the scheme add up to, in this example, £5,395.41. <clears throat> what it will do is go on to the next page and it will, for those who may not have looked at it, um, it does actually contain multiple estimates depending on your age. So what it'll do to help you um, plan for retirement and give you an indication of how your pension's building up, it will give you confirmation of your benefits at age 55, 60, 65 and your state pension age. If you have passed one of those dates, um, so if you're older than 55, then it would only show 60, 65 and state pension and, and so on. But what they do is they give you an idea of what your standard benefits will be. So your annual pension and any lump sum that you're automatically entitled to. And then what it will do is it'll tell you what your maximum lump sum is by giving up pension. So you'll see there at age 55, you would have had an annual pension of £11,866.94 as your standard benefits. But if you increase to the maximum lump sum, that reduces your annual pension down to £7,628 and gives you a tax-free lump sum of £50,858. We do that again for age 60, 65 and up to state pension age. So you'll see now that at state pension age, your standard benefits is £31,480.27. But if you increase converted pension to the maximum lump sum, your pension reduces down to £20,237.32. And it gives you a tax-free lump sum of £134,915.40. You don't have to convert to the maximum lump sum. You can go anywhere in between. So it's down to your own personal circumstances, whether you feel that the 20,237 isn't the annual pension that is right for you. So you could reduce the lump sum you've converted to give you a higher annual pension. So you can play around with the annual pension and the lump sum uh, conversion as well. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is just touch on the different ways you can plan for your future and increase the benefits you have at retirement. So if you've looked at your annual pension statement and you think actually that's not going to be the right amount of value for what I want to, the way you want to live your life, if you want to go traveling, do uh, work to the house or anything like that, then there are two options to increase your pension benefits. So the first one is an AVC. So that is stands for additional voluntary contributions 
It's a facility offered to allow you to pay extra contributions towards your pension. So an AVC is separate to your main scheme benefits, but it will increase your overall retirement benefits. So these are done through an AVC provider. So your scheme will have an AVC provider agreed um, and you can go on our website and find details under the paying extra section of who your AVC provider is and look into more information. You can pay up to 100% of your pensionable pay. Again, you get tax relief for contributing towards an AVC as well as your main scheme benefits. The contributions you pay into your AVC scheme are invested separately to your main scheme benefits. It can increase the amount of tax-free cash at retirement or it can be used as an additional income. And your AVCs are paired together with your LGPS main scheme benefits. With the AVC though, it is depends on how the investments work out and market fluctuations so that's just something to bear in mind when you are looking at that and you may want to seek financial advice if, if you're looking at AVCs to explore that further. <clears throat> the other option is paying an APC so this is an additional pension contribution so these buy you additional pension benefits in the scheme so it will increase your annual main scheme pension benefits in the main scheme. So again, you get tax relief on the contributions you can pay each month or via a lump sum. You can buy extra pension to a maximum of £8,344. £8, so this amount and limit is indexed and it rises by CPI each year. The LGPS members website does have a, a tool and calculator for you to look at to see how much extra pension you want to buy and what that cost will be. It's either paid through your salary monthly or as a one off payment. And the APC will contract will cease if you join the 50 50 scheme. So that's just something to bear in mind. If you're in the main scheme, you've set up an APC and you are looking to suddenly change to the 50 50 scheme that will have an impact on your APC contracts. So it's just something to bear in mind. So before we go into and explore the my pension hall, I'm uh, just going to ask another question. So I'll hand you back to Amy just to ask the question. Have you registered for my pension? OK, so that poll should be um, popping up on your screen now. Obviously, my pension is your um, secure access into your pension record. Um, so if there's one thing that you do after today's session, um, if you've not already done so, if you could sign up to my pension, that is your gateway into viewing your pension record, viewing your annual pension statement. Um, you, you can obviously use the calculator on there. So it's a really, really useful planning tool. Um, so if you're not signed up to my pension, which the majority of you are really good, 79%. Um, but for the remaining 16% who aren't signed up and, and the, the, very, the very few that don't know what my pension is, definitely pop that on your to-do list um, after today's session um, because that will give you a much, much more um, in detail insight into, into your own personal pension with, with your own bespoke figures. OK, thanks for participating in the poll. Back to Richard. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, everyone, for participating. Yeah, so as Amy advised, the My Pension online portal is there to provide you access to the information about your own pension and put you in the driving seat to take ownership of your pension account. So you can view your membership details, update your contact details, update your death grant nomination. So it's just something as easy. Once you've registered, you can click in, <clears throat> update your death grant nomination online and it comes through to us and we'll update your, uh, your record for you. You can view your documents. So we are looking to drive um, access to your benefit statement, your annual pension statement online, which gives you instant access um, to download and review that. You can run estimates now. So it has been developed to help you run estimates and plan for your retirement. <clears throat> so membership details allows you to look at your details and check that everything is OK. Personal details will give you <clears throat> stuff to look at your contact details. The change my account option so you can reset your password and then obviously the the view my documents as well. <clears throat> so
So to get signed up and register for my pension, you just visit our website at www.wypf.org.uk. Click on my pension, register your details, an activation key will be emailed to you and then you complete your registration. We've also done a, a My Pension registration video, so it's further assistance there to help you get registered if you need it, or you can contact our contact center and someone will be able to guide you through that as well. <clears throat> so we think online is a really good idea. It allows you to, it keeps you up to date. There's no need to store your documents at home. It's good for the environment. It's a one stop shop for you. It's designed to be clear and accessible. And it helps you support your pension journey as well, especially when it comes to planning for retirement and you utilizing the new pension estimate tool. So when you signed into my pension, the online portal is designed to give you a snapshot of your pension. So you can see there's a side menu. So it'll allow you to view your my folder documents, such as your annual pension statement. Um, if you're in receipt of a pension, you'll be able to view your pay slips and your P60s when you're a pensioner. <clears throat> and you can double check the information we hold is all correct. So there is a new function which is available. It's the online calculator. So the online calculator will allow you to run your own pension estimates. There's no limits on how many estimates you can run. So you can play around with figures to better assist you and help plan with your retirement. You'll see there you can also access information on your nominated beneficiaries. So for example, you can have a child at 10%, a spouse at 80% and another child at 10% or you can play around with the percentages and split them equally as well. So to utilize the new estimate function, it's quite straightforward. You simply input your date of retirement which has to be between age 55 and 75, and you press submit. <clears throat> the most recent pay information we will hold will pre-populate. If you're happy with this, you can just click submit. Um, if you want to provide a different pay, you can enter it here, but please make sure you include pounds and pence. Um, and once you've submitted the My Pension Calculate, your retirement estimate, and you can just click on show document and your figures will be saved to your pension documents as well. So if you're happy with the pay, you can leave it as is, or you can change it if you know it's been a change and we haven't been updated with the, the most recent pay, then you can have a play around and see what that projection will give you. <clears throat> I just want to make you aware of some of the additional resources um, that are available to you. Some I've already referenced and that will aid your understanding in your pension journey. So the WIPF Pension Fund website. So this is our own scheme detailed channel with lots of scheme specific information. And that is where you can register for my pension. There's the Retirement Living Standards website. The plan for the future is provided by the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association. So it looks at three levels of retirement. So minimum, moderate and comfortable. So it gives you an idea of the kind of lifestyle you want to live and help you plan that way. There's the Money Helper, which is another site which is useful. It's provided by the Money and Pension Service, which is sponsored by the DWP. So there's a wide range of financial information uh, available to you there. And there's Pension Wise Service for advice and guidance, and you can book in advice with them as well. <clears throat> and finally, there's the LGPS members website provided by the Local Government Association. Um, it's more national scheme resources, including calculators, and it's home of the pensions account modeler that I mentioned earlier for the APC, if you go to explore that option. <clears throat> and in terms of support that we can provide, so if you have any specific scenarios you're struggling with or still require some assistance, then please do get in touch with our customer service team. So our contact center will be able to assist you. You can contact them via email or on the contact center helpline. And again, we have a wealth of information on the WYPF website as well for you to look at and review. <clears throat> so planning ahead is obviously the best way to approach most things in life and finances are no different. So just want to make you aware of some of the partner courses we have available through West York Pension Fund. So there's some pre-retirement sessions that are run through our pre-retirement partner, Affinity Connect. So it's ideal for members within three years of retirement it's online delivery 
There's new financial wellbeing courses as well. Um, so sessions will provide information only and will not include or constitute financial advice, but it is a good way to plan for retirement and get some additional information to see so you make taking everything into account when you're planning for retirement. <clears throat> so actions for you, um, register for my pension if you haven't already done so. <clears throat> Check your details, so please review your annual pension statement to make sure the details are correct. <clears throat> Update your nomination. So if your circumstances have changed or it's been a while since you've done it. We always recommend you to just have a look and make sure, yes, they're up to date. That's who I still want to nominate. And then there's calculate your own estimate. So have a have a play around with the estimate tool and um, get more involved in planning for your retirement. And as I said, review your annual pension statement as well. So before I finish and we open the floor up some questions, just want to go through this disclaimer. So this presentation has been issued to you by West Yorkshire Pension Fund. This guidance has been prepared on the fund's current understanding of the scheme regulations. Therefore, should not be treated as a complete and authoritative statement of the law. Users may wish or will need to take their own legal advice on the interpretation of any particular regulations and no responsibility whatsoever will be assumed by the fund for any liability, financial or otherwise incurred by stakeholders relying on this statement. The fund does not accept any responsibility or reliance on the contained or referred to in this guidance. <clears throat> so that just leaves me to say thank you for joining us today. I hope that's been really informative and giving you some information to think about and some action points to take away. We will make some time now available for some questions. <clears throat> so and we will be sending a survey around in due course. And um, so if you can look at that and just respond back to us, let us know what we're doing right. And if there's any areas we can improve on or if there's anything you'd like to le learn more about, then that would be a really big help to us. Um, like I say, if you don't have any questions, feel free to leave the meeting. But if not, then we'll answer the questions that are available. <clears throat>